Today we're going to find to compare fractions by finding a common denominator. In number one it says draw an area model for each pair of fractions and use it to compare the two fractions by writing greater than, less than, or equal to on the line. The first two have been partially done for you. Each rectangle represents one. So we have learned a couple different strategies to solve this problem and on tonight's homework um, they have been given the choice of which strategy they have to use. So um, even though the directions say to use an area model, if that's not a strategy that works for them, um, they are able to pick a different one um, and not lose any points. So if we look at B for example, we have four fifths compared to three fourths and they started our table or our tape diagrams for us, our area model, so we can shade in. Um, there's two fifths and four fifths. And then if I go down here and I have three fourths. So I've used my tape diagram to show and model these two fractions. So I can take my tape diagram and find a common denominator and there are two different strategies that we've learned. We can multiply the denominators 5 times 4 and I can do this in my white space 5 times 4 equals 20 or I can write out a list of multiples and what I mean by that is skip counting. So I can skip count by 5's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and skip count by 4's 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And when I look at this list, the one number that's common on both lists is 20. So either way, if we're using multiplication of multiplying the denominators or we're writing out our multiples, we're going to find a similar number. Okay? So for this problem 20 is going to be my common denominator. So on my tape diagram I can draw my tape diagram to reflect that. So I have started with 4 fifths, now I need to show 20ths. So I have, so right now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I need to add another line, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So now I've changed 4 fifths into 20 fifths. And I can do the same on the bottom by changing this one into 20 fifths. And I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So when I find my, I can either count up the boxes in my new fraction or another strategy we have learned is using a multiplication sentence. So in our fraction equivalent sentences that we've been doing on our homework for a little bit now. So I can say 4 fifths equals something with the denominator of 20. And I can fill it in. 4 fifths times four, which you do on the top, you have to do on the bottom, and four times four is sixteen. So four fifths has turned into sixteen twentieths. And if I do the same for three fourths, three fourths equals something with twenty in the denominator, three fourths times five, which you do on the top, you have to do on the bottom, equals fifteen twentieths. Now that I have two fractions with the same denominator, all I have to do is compare the top number, the numerator, and I know that 16 is greater than 15. So when looking at tonight's homework, we know that we can do a couple different things to solve this problem. We can draw the tape diagrams to help us show our work. That's one strategy. We can multiply the denominators to get our new common denominator. That's another strategy. We can write out our multiples to find a common denominator. Or 
we can write out our equivalent sentences to find our equivalent fractions to compare. So as long as the students are showing their work somehow, they don't have to have all of this, but they need to show their work at, in some way, shape, or form. So let's do one more problem using just some of the strategies that we've learned. Three-fifths compared to four-sevenths. In order to find a common denominator, I'm going to multiply five times seven. And I know five times seven is 35. So my new denominator needs to be 35. So I'm gonna set up my fraction equivalent sentences and find my new fractions with a denominator of 35. And when I fill in the middle, 3 fifths times something, 5 times 7 equals 35, and what you do on the bottom you have to do on the top. So my new fraction is 21 30 fifths, 4 sevenths times something, 7 times 5 equals 35, and what you do on the bottom you have to do on top. And so now I have 20 30 fifths. So when I look at the new fractions that I have, my denominators are the same. So I only have to compare the top number, the numerator, and 21 is greater than 20.